movement around cell therapies is due to the clinical success of CAR T cell therapy. The utility of this type of medicine, using cells as the therapy itself, goes well beyond cancer treatment. As an example, let's think about damaged cartilage. This is a common occurrence in our weight-bearing joints, such as our knees. However, cartilage does not regenerate on its own in humans, especially when defects get above a certain size. And this can contribute to our mobility issues or our ability to maintain a healthy lifestyle or also contribute to arthritis. But there is a cell therapy product that has been developed to meet that challenge. That type of cell therapy product is called autologous chondrocyte implantation. And specifically, we'll talk about matrix-induced autologous chondrocyte implantation, or MACI. This is a cell therapy used to repair some of those cartilage defects. Many of the same manufacturing steps that we discussed earlier are also used in MACI. First, we need to acquire the cells from the patient, for example, from a healthy location in the joint. Then we need to separate those cells from the other materials in that acquisition. Then we need to expand those cells up to a therapeutically relevant dosage, and then package them to become a product that we can return to the patient. In fact, Macy is the latest generation of this general approach to autologous chondrocyte implantation. That cell therapy technique is intended to repair the damaged cartilage at the site of injury. Now, chondrocytes are the only cells found in healthy cartilage, and in the body, they produce that cartilaginous matrix that gives us the load-bearing capacity in a joint like the knee. Our mechanisms are insufficient, and so ACI provides another approach to help the body repair itself. The innovation of Macy, though, is in seeding those chondrocytes into a collagen membrane. And that membrane, that construct, is easier to place in the injury than previous formulations of ACI that were a liquid formulation. This makes the surgery itself less involved, and it also provides the potential for the patient to recover more quickly. So let's go through the steps of manufacturing Macy and look at how these could be the same or different than the manufacturing of a CAR T cell therapy product. So similar to CAR T cell therapy manufacturing, the first step in manufacturing conceptually begins at the clinic. We need to acquire the necessary cells for the final product. In this case, healthy chondrocytes can be removed from an undamaged portion of our joints, such as the non-load-bearing portion of the knee. And again, similar to CAR T, the cells that we're looking to grow and manufacture must then be selected and separated from the other biological material. And that material is either unwanted or just unnecessary for the manufacturing process. In this case, the tissue biopsy is subjected to enzymatic degradation. So enzymes naturally degrade the collagen that is in the cartilage and leave behind the healthy chondrocytes. Next, we need to grow more of those chondrocytes to reach a therapeutically relevant dosage. And here, this is done by what's called serial passaging. So you have one flask of chondrocytes that grows and expands and fills that flask that is then separated into two. Those two are separated. Packaging takes about a month in this manufacturing. The chondrocytes are then collected and placed into a scaffold made of porcine collagen. This means that the collagen came from a pig and was subjected to its own process to decellularize that collagen. So the pig's cells are removed, the collagen is left behind, and used as a scaffold or a construct to then seed the human chondrocytes into. And that scaffold is actually a very important component of the Macy product because the mechanical stimuli and structure that that gives the chondrocytes is very important to the integrity of the construct during implantation as well as the behavior of the cells after implantation to elicit the repair. Now both the process and the product are monitored to ensure consistency and final product quality so that the product can then be released to the clinic and then the patient. And then you would do release testing and there's a number of different assays, but key assays for a cell are the three assays, viability, identity, and potency. And so we have 
VIP assays for Macy, and we would use those as a basis for release, but also that's a way of making sure that you're being consistent. Macy, interestingly, has an extremely short shelf life, and this cell therapy product cannot be frozen. So therefore, some of the release tests that we used in other cell therapy products are just not suitable for Macy. In particular, those release tests related to sterility of the product, as John Duga discusses. So our products actually are delivered fresh, so the shelf lives are very short. So we can't just, um, we, we actually don't have time to complete an entire USP compendial test before the product would be implanted into a patient. So it was important to us to be able to detect contamination early and we identified a technology that could detect contaminants significant, significantly faster than the compendial test. So as you just heard from John, Macy is delivered fresh and never frozen to the patient. This means that the final product shipping and managing that supply chain when a product has such a short shelf life before it makes its way back to the patient is another challenge that cell therapy manufacturing often faces. One uh, interesting aspect of cell therapy is you produce this high quality cell therapy final product, now you have to deliver it. Those are still challenges. So we use qualified shippers that are designed to protect, uh, isolate, insulate the actual final product for temperature controls, physical pr um, protection, if you will. And then we also have our instructions for use for the, surg the surgical sites. Once the product is back to the clinic, a physician will trim the edges of that collagen defect in the person's joint, then cut the membrane, that cell therapy product, to fit that defect and glue it into place. The chondrocytes in that Macy product will then produce more cartilage, more matrix, even more cells, and then that collagen membrane that was part of the original construct will naturally and eventually degrade and be resorbed by the body. So when you think about it, CAR-T and Macy are two very different cell therapy products that share some manufacturing commonalities. CAR-T is a systemic cell therapy product you deliver the cells to the patient so they can go to many different places in the body. CAR-T is a genetically engineered cell therapy product, so we have to bring new genetic material into the manufacturing process to impart the cell functions that we need to have for the therapy. And CAR-T is treatment for a disease, in particular cancer. Macy, on the other hand, is a locally delivered cell therapy product. In this case, we want the cells to stay where they're implanted, the joint, the knee. But the chondrocytes that are used to produce that cell therapy product require no genetic engineering. They already have the biological functions necessary to impart that localized repair function. And then finally, Macy is an example of a cell therapy product used to treat an injury rather than a disease. But despite these differences in the cell therapy products and the indications that they're used to address, there's many commonalities in the manufacturing processes. We need to acquire the cells from the patient, or if it were not an autologous cell therapy product, a donor. We then need to separate the cells of interest for the product from the other biological material, and then expand the cells, and then finally repackage those cells as a product that can be tested, qualified, and delivered to the clinic to then be delivered to the patient. There's no question that there are many manufacturing challenges left for cell therapy to overcome, even in these two cases, but there's also no question that this type of medicine, cells as the therapy, is very, very promising. Uh, you know, I, I have uh, a lot of uh, faith that this is really the beginning of a third phase of therapy. We had small molecules, then we had recombinant proteins, and now I think we're going to have cells as products, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So now that we have a high-level view of how cell therapies are manufactured, and we've stepped through just two case studies, let's now dive into some of the details. 